We are back with Bobby Jensen, who's going to be answering some of your questions in our Grow With Care segment. It's good to see you, Bobby. I was actually talking with uh, Belinda the other day. She was prepping me for my <laughs> interview toss back with you, uh, and she was mentioning that you are a big fan of ice fishing. Is that right? Oh, yeah, I heard you are, too. She told me the same thing. We'll have to I love ice fishing. We'll have to swap fishing spots uh, after the break one of these days. Well, I don't know about that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'll see. I'll share with uh, you some of the pictures, and then maybe uh, you'll give me some spots. Uh, okay, so question number one we have from Kristen. Uh, Kristen's wondering why her amaryllis plant hasn't bloomed. She's had it since last summer, and she keeps it in a window and waters it regularly. Well, I, what I think her problem is, amaryllis need a rest period. In a way, it sounds like she's let this plant sit there all summer long, and it's never going to bloom that way. So what happens is, sometime in late summer, you take, bring it in, cut the leaves all the way back, let it dry out, uh, put it in a dark, cool place for six, uh, 12, 14 weeks, then take it out, and then it should redo. But the key is to let it grow all summer long so that the leaves store the energy, put energy back into the bulb. So I think that's what didn't happen this year. But she's fine. Let it grow now straight through. Sometime in September, cut it back, store it, and it'll bloom next next winter. Okay, so it's got to go to sleep, in other words, as we had did. It needs a rest period, exactly. Go. Okay, next question. Shannon wants to know how she can save this plant. She said she uh, it did well on her porch this summer. Should she keep it in the sun or the shade? Well, it's a transcandia, which, you know, it's a really easy plant. If I had that plant and it looked that bad, I would cut it right back down to an inch or two. And then miraculously, probably within six weeks, she'll have a full, beautiful plant. They grow in bright light. Uh, water it normally. No, it's a very, very simple plant. But I think what she needs to do is cut it back, start that plant all over again. You say simple plant. It, it, someone like me is not. Uh, nothing is simple when it comes to plants, especially uh, this next variety. Uh, Betty wants to know why her orchid uh, uh, wants to know uh, about her orchid. It sits on the shelf and it's sticky. She doesn't see any bugs or webs on it. Right. Well, she's really got to look underneath the leaves. That's the very first thing you do. Look under the leaves. See if you see little aphids or anything like that. But here's something: there are some orchids that grow happy sap. And what happy sap does, the orchid growers believe, it attracts the pollinators. And one of the things she said was that it was dripping all over on her counter. And that made me believe that it might be a plant that's growing, that's producing its own sap to attract. Because realistically, when, when they have the sticky substance from the insects, it pretty much stays on the leaves. So she might have any, she might be doing great because happy sap only happens when a plant's happy. Happy sap. I guess you just Happy have to have a, a, a tray Who underneath. Who knew? Yeah, absolutely. Okay, uh, so Mary's wondering uh, why there are spots on the leaves of her uh, money plant. Any ideas? Right, well, it's a pialea. It's a Chinese money plant. And, and the thing with that, it's not in bad shape, but it has to do usually with the watering. They're very conscious about the watering, especially in the winter. In the winter, let it dry out a good inch in your pot. A, even some people say, you know, 25% of the pot, let it dry out before you water it and then water it till it comes out the bottom. Never let it sit in water. It's what she has is not a horrible deal, but I think it has to do with more water more than sunlight and, and things like that. And now tell us about this article that you recently posted on the care page about volcano mulch. Well, what happens is people build up mulch and they just keep building it up on the tree. And in that volcano part, the tree actually rots and it can kill the tree down the line. So basically, and one of somebody re reminded me of the old saying, three, three, three. And it's really pretty simple. It's your mulch is three feet out. It's three inches deep and it's three feet and it's three inches away from the trunk. If you do that, you need no more than three to four inches of mulch anytime you're mulching, but specifically around trees. You don't want to pile it up and that's what they call a volcano because it looks like that. And that is one of the worst things you can do to a tree. If you've got it, 
pull it away. It might be too late, but pull it away anyway. But if you're planting, make sure you keep it a couple inches away, three to four feet away from the trunk, build the bed, and only three to four inches deep. That's okay. all you need to do. All right, good to know. Middle of January. And by the way, Ben, oh. I really do like David. He's a great guy. <laughs> He's okay, yeah. On camera and off camera. Yeah, middle of January, we're uh, excited to still talk about the growing season uh, here go. on CARE 11. Uh, so, hey, thank you, Bobby, for uh, joining us. And, uh, My pleasure. You can uh, check out our Grow With Care page. We've got a Facebook page as well, and you can uh, see all the uh, kinds of cool things that folks are doing.